In this video, it is time to design our road, to get our road put into Civil 3D with the use of corridors. We have all the required pieces now. We have an alignment, we have a horizontal layout, we have a vertical layout with our vertical profile here, and we have an assembly to track along those pieces. So we have our XY information provided by the alignment, our Z value information provided by the profile, and what that cross section looks like. Now said in the previous video, the X, Y, and Z will track along this very center marker. So the center of this blue marker, that is what is going to follow our X, Y, and Z, which are alignment and profile. So the first thing we're gonna do is you can build a corridor from the ribbon. If you go corridor, create corridor, or we can come up to corridor and create a corridor through the drop downs. Now I'm gonna name this 50th Avenue, not 60th Avenue, 50th Avenue, because that's what I named my assembly. Try and keep these descriptive as well. If you have more than one corridor in your drawing, it just helps keep things separate. I'm gonna choose my corridor style, and let's use that one. This one I believe provides us, actually let's use this one. This one gives us more information. My baseline, or sorry, it's gonna put it on a layer C core 50th Avenue. My baseline type alignment and profile. Alternatively, you could have one feature line designing, uh, defining X, Y, and Z for it to follow along. However, I believe you get more information from alignment and profile. It's easier to see. The alignment I'm gonna choose is my highway. And my profile now, this is where we need to pay attention. Do not choose existing ground because that is going to provide a very bumpy corridor and it's not gonna give you any of the information you want and it's gonna look horrible. So again, naming things, very, very important. We're gonna choose our design ground. The assembly, I'm gonna choose my 50th Avenue assembly and my target surface will be existing ground, city of Calgary. When I go and build this, I want it to automatically target the existing ground on the outside. I'm gonna turn this set baseline and region parameters off for now. So Civil 3D will build the corridor for me and then we will enter the property dialog box to look at that. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I believe I'm either on a 10 or 20 meter sample increment. So it, it takes a little bit to model. It's not overly painful, but here we have our corridor and that's not giving me the information I want. So let's see if we can try the other corridor style. There we go. So I've changed it to this corridor style. All we've added in was the lines that go across the road. Now, the way a corridor is built is it'll start at zero and go to the end of the road. And whatever your sampling increments, in this case, I believe it is 10 meters. I'll just quickly check. The frequency 10. So every 10 meters, Civil 3D will reapply that assembly. So if something gets deformed or you start going around a corner, every 10 meters, Civil 3D is going to apply that assembly. Unfortunately, when we do go around corners, it truncates it into straight little sections. It doesn't curve it nicely like the road. So these are a bunch of just straight lines connecting together what appears to be an arc. So just keep that in mind when you're providing survey points that this is what it's doing. We can increase the frequency of the sampling. However, that will affect how fast your corridor is going to be built. So let's go take a look at some of the options we can play with on this corridor. And I'll show you up here how to get rid of this giant fill because we are building a bridge there. So I'm gonna select my corridor. Alternatively, you could go through your tool space, expand corridor, right click and go properties. Here you can do the same thing, right click corridor properties. And I'll bring you up the 50th Avenue dialog box. So I'm just using this corridor style. If I apply the other one, it just gets rid of the blue lines. My parameters tab, this is where your corridor, how all the information is built. Right now we have one baseline and one region. So if I right click add a region, which I'm going to have to in a second here, we can change the way this corridor looks as we go along it. So I'm going to take my end station, my normal road, and I want my normal road to end right here, right where that bridge starts. And I need to add another region after. 
which we didn't make a second assembly. However, I can turn the daylights off. So if I come into the targets, my target surfaces are not turned on. So you can either build another assembly or just turn the targets off. So if I look in this target window, we see our target surface is existing ground city of Calgary. And we have width and shoulder width targets as well, so we can expand and contract the road as needed. We can change our frequencies. So if I click set all frequencies and I say go to a five meter interval, I can choose to sample at horizontal geometry points. No super elevation critical points, no. I'm gonna switch all these to no. It'll make a smoother looking road when you go to export it, but it's not gonna make a huge design difference. So I'll change all those to five. And if I hit OK and rebuild, this is going to take about two times longer to rebuild because I'm doubling the sampling stations. So this will update to 5 meters spacing. This will update to 5 meters spacing. However, we should see these large areas go away. So where our bridge is now, we do not have the corridor building. Now as I go along it, and you can set these up to be either blue or green, depending if it's cut or fill. But we can take a look at our profile as well. So around this section here, so we're starting to have an area of fill. So we need to build all this up. We need to, I believe, cut all that in there. So we're going from fill to cut, yes. And again, if you make them colors, it's a little bit easier to decipher. However, this is, a, this is our corridor building a simple corridor, looking in the corridor properties, checking out, changing our frequencies, looking at our targets. Again, you can set all frequencies, you can set all targets. There's some couple dangerous buttons here if you have a lot of information. We added another region. If you wanted to build another road going across this, you could add a, sorry, add a baseline up here. So you'll pick your new alignment and you can design a corridor that way. In the next video, we'll look at how to extract a surface from this corridor.